Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over some properties of rational exponents and also simplifying these two uh, using these properties. Okay, so let's quickly review what are the properties. First one is the product of powers and that one basically says that if we multiply two powers with the same base, we add up those exponents. Uh, then we have power of a power. So if we uh, you know, take a base to a power and then take that entire expression to another power, we multiply the powers. Then there's power of a product. So if we have the product a times b and we take that to the power of m, that's the same thing as taking a to the power m and taking b to the power m and then multiplying them afterwards. Then we have the negative exponent property, which states that if we have a negative exponent, it is the same as um, taking the reciprocal of that and having a positive exponent. Then there's the zero property, which states that anything to the power of zero is equal to one other than zero itself. Zero to the power of zero is undefined, but anything else to the power of zero is equal to one. Uh, then we have the quotient of powers right, where if we have um, two powers, or sorry, two bases that are the same to different powers or to the same power, we can subtract those powers. Uh, and then we have the power of a quotient. So if we have a over b to the power of m, that's the same as taking a to the power m and b to the power m separately and then dividing them after. Okay, so that was a good quick review of those properties. I'm going to now go over how we can simplify these expressions using those properties. Okay, so first thing I notice about a is that we have in the numerator x to the power of a half times y to the power of a third, and all that is to the power of six. So using a couple of those properties there, recall that whenever we have the product to um, whenever we have a product that's to a power, it's the same as taking each of those parts of the product to that power separately. So this is the same thing as x to the power of a half to the power of six times y to the power of a third to the power of six. So that would be my very first step there. And then the denominator, I'll just keep the same for now. Okay, and then next we have a power to a power, right? We have x to the power of a half, and then all that to the power of a six. And same with y, we have y to the power of a third, and then all of that is to the power of six. And when we have a power to a power, we multiply those powers. So we're gonna get x to the power of six over two times y to the power of six over three over x cubed y squared. Okay, then we're going to divide. So six over two is three, so we have y cubed, and then six to the power, or sorry, six over three is two, so y squared. So then we just have x cubed times y squared over x cubed times y squared. And of course, as we know, when we divide, you know, any, the, the same thing by itself, anything by itself, we just get one. And so this whole expression here, a, can just be simplified to one, which is pretty interesting. Now we do have a couple restrictions on the variables that I should mention that this is provided that x does not equal to zero and that y does not equal to zero because if either one of those is equal to zero, then actually the expression wouldn't be one in that scenario. It would be undefined because we can never have a zero in the denominator. And that's something I'll even write for b as well. x and y cannot be zero because if they are, then we have an undefined um, expression here as well since x and y squared are both in our denominator in the second question as well. Uh, okay, awesome. Uh, let's try b. So b is pretty similar. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, take all the parts of the product to the power of 4. So here we have 3 to the power of 4 times x to the power of a four, um, 1 fourth to the power of 4 times y to the power of 1 half to the power of 4. And that's all over x times y squared. Then we have uh, 3 to the power of 4, which is 81. And then x to the power of 4 over 4, because we're multiplying those powers. And then y to the power of 4 over 2, 
because same thing here, we're multiplying those powers. Then on my next line, I'm going to simplify the, uh, the fraction. So x to the power of 4 over 4 is just the same as x to the power of 1, or just x. And then y to the power of 4 over 2, that's just the same as y squared. So then we end up being able to cancel these once again. And the answer is just 81, provided that x and y do not equal 0. Because again, if x or y is 0, or if both are 0, then we end up with an undefined uh, expression here. We end up with b being undefined rather than being 81. Uh, but yeah, feel free to ask any questions you might have about any of that in the comments. And we'll see you for the next one.